Hello everybody, I'm Jackie K. Cooper and this is my entertainment rundown. Well, it has arrived. The Lion King, the real life version. Not the animated version, which I think was released sometime like in 1994, somewhere around that. Can't believe it's been that long, 25 years. But this is the live action version and it will have its fans and it will have its detractors and it will have those who are right in the middle, just about. I remember going to see The Lion King for the first time. I was just blown away. That opening scene of the circle of life where all the animals were gathered around, Pride Rock, which was this rock jutting out, you know, overhead where Musafa was there, the Lion King, and then the the monkey came and held up the cub, Simba, you know, as the new prince announcing it. I remember just having chills running up and down my body, seeing that and hearing that music, that song for the first time. It was just amazing. Well, they opened this movie in the same way. You know, all you could see all of the animals, you know, striding across the, you know, plains or forest or, or whatever you want to call it, to, to go and stand there and be introduced and, you know, form, formally, you know, seeing Simba presented as the prince who will become the Lion King at some time. And a woman by the name of Carmen Twilley uh, sings Circle of Life. Uh, it bothered me because I couldn't recognize the voice when I was seeing the movie. And I, and I was thinking, who is singing this? And so I looked it up, and, and that's her name. She has a beautiful voice. Uh, but just like the entire movie, everything is underplayed to me. I mean, I wanted the speakers to rattle with, you know, the circle of life, the circle of life, you know, let's do it big time. And it was just, you know, the circle of life. Very pretty, very well sung, but you didn't get that thrill from it. And then from there, you go into the basic plot of the movie, which is, uh, you know, King of the Lions, Musafa, who is voiced by James Earl Jones, who also voiced Musafa in the animated version. And then you have uh, his brother, Scar, who is kind of the person who wants to usurp the throne, even though Simba is uh, you know, named to be the successor. Scar is always lurking in the background and plotting things. And Jeremy Irons did his voice in the original uh, animated film. And Chuitel, Chuitel Jafor does it in this one. And he is really good. James Earl Jones, you know, you couldn't have had another voice from Musafa uh, while James Earl Jones was still alive. You had to have him. And so he and Chiwetel Ejiofor are both good. And then you have the story of Simba, you know, trying to, you know, earn his place or not feeling like it is his place to be king. And then he grows up. And one of the main things there is his betrothed, the uh, female line, who is going to be his wife and his queen, she is voiced by Beyonce. And for me, knowing it was Beyonce was a detraction. Uh, it just, you know, I kept thinking, oh, that's Beyonce, etc. I never got her in to the character. But the overall way that the movie is shot, it's, it's very dark, you know, it's not just in color, but also in the storyline, I, I just remember these gleeful moments. Uh, and maybe I just didn't remember the darker moments from the animated version. But uh, this is, you know, this is about, you know, who's going to rule the pride uh, of, of the lions and what dirty deeds are going to be done in the background to get to them. And, you know, it's, it's a dark story. It's, you know, it's about life and death. So, and then also... I know there were colors in the film, but it seemed like the colors were muted. That, you know, you had these beige and brown and, you know, and very little green and red and yellow, whatever. And so the tone of the film. Also, you know, th th these are real live animals. And it, to me, it looked like you know, one of those Disney na nature stories that they do about the penguins and the pandas, etc. And they always give the, you know, the animals characters, you know, like here's Ernie the penguin and he's looking for his mate Zelda and, but they don't talk. You know, in this movie, the lips move. 
and the, the lips sing, but you don't get the expressions. Uh, you know, the eyebrows don't raise up and down, it you know, or, or whatever that you had in the animated version. I remember the Hakuna Matata song uh, that you know is sung. It's just Pumbaa and Timon uh, sing it. Uh, they're voiced by Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner, and they do a good job with singing that song, but it doesn't have the spontaneity that was in the, the animated film. Everything about this movie is good. I'm not saying, you know, that it's less than good, but it's not great. You know, you just don't have the emotional reaction. Now, maybe the kids and those people who have never seen the original Lion King, maybe they'll say, oh, this is amazing. Listen to that music. Listen to those songs. And, you know, they'll be excited about it. But those of us who have a comparison to make it to and think about, you know, in the glow of our memory, what was, then that's a difference. I also have to mention, it's always bothered me that in the middle of this Lion King movie with all the original music that was written for it, here comes The Lion Sleeps at Night. You remember that song? I mean, some of you may be too young to remember, but years and years and years ago, there was a, a, a version of that song that came out, and it was a big pop hit. The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Ooh, that type of thing. But it's in this movie. They bought the rights when they made the first movie. Maybe it was just so appropriate to, to fit in with this movie that they bought the rights and inserted that song into the film. But the movie itself is rated PG because there's mild violence, you know, in the conflicts between Scar and the, you know, the hyenas that are there who are the evil people in the film. So you've got, you know, him, his alliance with them. So you've got that element in the film. So that's why it's rated PG. I scored it six out of 10. Now that's better than average. You know, don't tell me that I hated it. I didn't. It's better than average. It's just not great. I'm sorry. I wanted some chills and thrills. I wanted to be singing those songs when I came out of the theater, and I wasn't. So I know we're going to have this. The Little Mermaid's going to have a live action. Mulan's going to have a live action. 101 Dalmatians is going to have another live action. So we've got a store of Disney films ahead of us. Maybe it's a good idea, maybe because it's a known product, but to me, these just don't achieve the glory of the animated versions. And I'm including Aladdin and Dumbo in that also. So, you know, I like The Jungle Book. That's the one I really did like. So that's my report on The Lion King. Then I would just want to briefly mention a couple of other movies. We have a film called Summer Night. Uh, it's got Annalie Tipton, Justin Chatwin, Lana Condra, and Victoria Justice. And it's about a group of young people in a town. It was filmed in Atlanta, so it might be about Atlanta. But they're a group of young people. They're in you know, college age. There are relationships. There's you know, a local hangout where different musical groups play. They're all trying to figure out what is life about? Where do we go from here? Do we just stay where we are and, you know, keep hanging out and doing our music and, you know, eking out a living that way? Or do we, should we be thinking about the grander plan? And then what about the relationships? Am I going to stay with this person or not stay with this person? So it's all about that, you know, the complexities of relationships. The actors who do it, you know, are not overly impressive. They're, they're acceptable in the roles. Uh, this film is not rated, but would probably fall into PG-13 to R rating because there's a lot of profanity. There's a lot of talk about sexual activity, uh, but no nudity and very little mild violence in it. But it's, you, you get interested in the people, you get interested in the stories, and, and you think, you know, this could have been developed into so much more. I saw, you know, these are movies that I've seen in the past that were had these same subject matter about relationships and and what are we going to do in the in the future? Uh, you know the the, the Brat Pack uh, was the group that kind of brought these stories to life. Demi Moore, you know Rob Lowe, et cetera, That group. Well, this this has that kind of feel to it. But I scored it five out of ten. It just didn't get above average to me. 
you know, if you've got nothing better to do, it, it'll keep your, your mind occupied. But I also want to mention a Netflix movie. I've been asking me if I've been watching any Netflix or Amazon or other, other movies on television. And I saw one that interested me. It's called Point Blank. At first, the, the main thing I go back to is an old movie during my younger days. It starred Lee Marvin and Angie Dickinson. This movie has no relationship whatsoever with that. This is a film, and it's kind of like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Y'all may relate to that or may not. But Hitchcock loved to get innocent bystanders involved in life or death situations. You know, he just have some innocent man or woman who happened to stumble into something of peril. Uh, you know, it was either mistaken identity or being in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time, or whatever. And in this film, we have Anthony Mackie, uh, who plays a, a, a doctor uh, at a hospital and he goes into work and they have brought in a, a guy the police do played by frank grillo and he is accused of murder and so he uh is in the hospital and the his brother uh goes and kidnaps anthony mackie's wife who is in, three weeks away from having their first child. So they're holding her hostage and they tell him, you've got to get the brother, Frank Rillo, out of the hospital and get let us get together and then we'll let your wife go. So that's the setup for the movie. And it's a good setup. Uh, I just, I like Anthony Mackie. He's, he's a good actor. Frank Rillo is good. Uh, Marsha Gay Harden, who's one of my favorite actresses, she plays a, a police detective who is trying to track down the, the two brothers. Uh, she has you know, her reasons for trying to get to them uh, for information, so you've got all of that going on. It's just, it's just a movie that held my interest. I mean, Marsha Gay Harden is always good in any role that she's in, and if you're an Anthony Mackie fan, this is a good role for him, and his wife does a good job, too. The actress who plays her, Tiana Paris, I hadn't heard of her before, but I really did appreciate her involvement in the movie. She is just, I don't know, there's something about her character. She has spunk. You know, she's not going to just be held quietly and submissively. So if you get a chance and you want to watch this, it's you know, on Netflix. It's called Point Blank. It's rated for mature audiences because they have. it's got violence and profanity in it. I scored it 6 out of 10. So just about the two sixes and a 5 for this show. Lion King gets a 6. Point Blank gets a 6. Summer Night gets a 5. So reach down here and hit the uh, subscribe button. We'd love to have you on board as a subscriber. You can keep up with us on all of these entertainment rundowns. But for now, this is Jackie K. Cooper.